And today we have a visit from an old friend. Uh, Ard van der Vettering has provided us the puzzle on the screen today. And this is quite an exciting puzzle, I think, for anyone new to the channel and maybe anyone who struggles a bit with some of the very intense logical puzzles that we do. Uh, our testers report that this is very approachable. Um, and, you know, as it's an Ard puzzle, we know it's going to be supremely elegant. Um, so it might be a good one if you're if you're relatively new to Sudoku variants to have a try with. Um, now, what I want else do I want to say today? I do want to give a shout out to our Discord channel. This is a fan Discord channel that you guys have set up, and I was astonished to read that it now has fifteen hundred members, and it regularly seems to have hundreds of people on it at any one time, all discussing the videos or Sudoku logic problems. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really thriving community. So if any of you are looking for people to talk to or <laughs> people to talk to about Sudoku, do check it out. I really think it might be uh, interesting. And especially we get a number of emails from uh, potential setters of puzzles who are struggling to find test solvers because maybe they don't know anyone in real life who solves Sudoku. Well, I, I really think you'll find uh, some willing volunteers over on our Discord channel. So I'll put a link under the video and you should you should check it out. Um, now with that, uh, I'm going to tell you the rules to Ard's new puzzle. So it's very simple today. You can see there are some grey cages in, in the Sudoku grid. Well, the grey cages need to contain the digits or need to contain consecutive digits. So we don't know what those digits are. We don't know the order they're in. But we do know that each individual L-shaped region has to contain five consecutive digits. Um, and that's all there is to it. Apart from that, it's just normal Sudoku. Do have a go to play. What you do is you click the link under the video. That will take you to a a web page that looks identical to this one where you can play on whichever device takes your fancy. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, we can see this cage up here. That's got a one in it. So if it's got five consecutive digits, it must have one, two, three, four, and five. We've got the one, two, and three in there already. So we can place the four and the five. Um, Let me just take a stare at this. Eights are quite interesting. We have two eights in the grid. It's the only digit that is repeated in, in the givens, uh, given cell. So that has an interesting effect on this region. Because look, we can't put an eight in the yellow cells. And there is a seven in, in, in the grey cells here. So we actually know that this L-shaped region now must contain three, four, five, six, and seven, so we can put those in. Ah, now that has reminded me of something I've seen before in puzzles like this. Sometimes this puzzle is called Renban, I think. Um, but where you have regions of size five, as we do in this puzzle, we actually know that every single one of these regions has to contain the digit five. And that's because self-evidently there are nine digits between one and nine inclusive. So if we're, if we're looking to fill a five cell region with consecutive squares, the five simply has to be included in every one of those regions. And actually, look, we can do, yeah, we can do something with the four, five pair in the top. If we know there's a five in one of those two cells, and we know this grey region has a 5 in it, there must be a 5 in one of those cells. And therefore, actually we can continue this round the grid look, there must be a 5 in one of those two cells. And therefore, there must be a 5 in one of these cells. And that, that, that actually resolves that this 4-5 pair at the top. So that's got to be a 4 now, because it can't be a 5, that's a 5. And now this, this region has to have a 5 in it, and it can't be in any of those four squares, so it must be there. 
Oh, this is just beautiful, isn't it? This is going to chain all the way around the grid. There's got to be a five in that one now. And now that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Good Lord. As usual, Ard van der Vettering comes up with just the most... Yeah, it's just gorgeous logic. It's not, it's not difficult today to spot this, but it is so elegant. Um, right, so we've now finished all of the fives all of a sudden. And in this box, look, we've got to place one, two, and nine into the open cells. And there's a nine up there, so that one's got to be a one or a two. Oh. Um. I was just noticing here, look, there's no, there's no nine in this box anymore. So there must be a four, and the four is going to have to be in one of those two cells. Which means that cell down there is a four. Three, six. And there must be a four in one of those three positions. Now, where should we look next? We've got five digits in the first row of the grid. Ah, yeah, look, we can do something here because let's look at the logic of those two squares. In fact, um, I'll label them all. Um, we've got to place one, six, seven, and eight in the row. Now, this one can't be a one or an eight, but it's these two I want to look at. Can there be a one in either of those cells? So could we put a one in either of these two positions? Well, the answer is no, because if we do, um, we know that the gray cells in this L-shaped region would have to be the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So we couldn't put a six or seven or an eight uh, in either of these two cells, yet we know that there needs, there would need to be a one, a, either a six, seven, or eight to accompany the one because of the contents of the row. So there is actually no one in those squares. That means that's a one look. There must be a one down there somewhere. Ah, okay. So now this has got a four in it. And it's got an eight in it because this can't be an eight. That's crucial. So if we know that there's a four and an eight in the same grey region, we actually know that that grey region must be four, six, seven, and eight in some order. And we know the eight is up there, so it's not down here. We know the four. Oh, the six, sorry. Look, we can do something with a six. That's got to be a six. From the three six pair down at the bottom. Therefore, that's got to be a seven. That's got to be an eight. And this is a four seven pair all of a sudden. Which means if we look at column nine now, these two squares can only be one, two, and nine to com complete this little triple look. Ah, now this cage. This cage can't contain a seven or a one. So it must contain a six and it must contain every digit below below six because there's got to be five cells in it. So this is in fact two, three, four and six into those squares there which means those two are eight and nine. There's an eight here. So we get those eight, nine. Eight, nine must be these two squares now. Those two squares must be six and seven to complete the box. That's not a six, therefore. This one is not a seven. Now that square's got to be two, three, four, or six looking at the, ah, but we've got a four, six here. So this is a two or a three. So you can see, hopefully, that this square and this square have a relationship between them, i.e. whatever we put in this square must appear in this square. So, uh, in fact, we've got the four there already, so we could have just eliminated that, but these two have to be have the same options. There's got to be a one in one of those two squares. Now... Ah, this seven, look. This seven is forcing a seven onto the grey region here. 
So once there's a 7 on it, we know there must be a 6 on it. And therefore, we can place the 6. And can we do better than that? We probably can. I'm not quite seeing how to. Um, yeah, apologies if you guys are seeing something easy there. I'm not seeing it. Let's carry on. Um, oh, yes, fours. These two fours pinch this L-shaped region. So there can't be a four on it. Now, if there can't be a four on it, those squares have got to be six, seven, eight, nine. There's a seven here, so there's no seven there. There's a seven in one of those two squares, and that points at that square. So that's got to be a six, and that's a seven. Now, now there's a seven on this gray region, which means, again, there must be a six on this gray region somewhere. Could be in any of those three squares, though. Oh, but now, as there's a seven on this region, there can't be a one on it. So where does the 1 go in this box? It can only go there. That's got to be a 1. So that's not a 1 over there. Um. Ah, now I've got something else here for you. Look, we've got 1s in these two cells. So there's a 1 in one of those two positions in this box. In fact, there's a 3 in one of those positions as well. Let's actually complete the pencil marking. So this is a 1-3 pair, but the critical thing is, look, the 1s in box 7 and box 9 are locked into the same rows of the grid. Now we know that row 7 and row 8 will contain exactly two ones in the finished solution. Um, and we know that they are located in the yellow squares. So there can't be any more ones in the in row seven and row eight. So those two can't be one anymore. Another way of thinking about that is simply to say, where does the one go in row nine of the grid? You can see it can't go in those squares. It can't go in these squares. So it must be in one of those three positions. And those two rule out those two. So it's got to be here. So, again, we can say once there's a 1 in this box, look, there must be a 6 on the grey region. Now, is that helpful? It might be helpful. I can't see quite how to do it. Ah, I can place a 4 in this box, though. These two squares, in fact, have to be 2 and 4 because we, everything else is pencil marked and there's a 4 there. So that's a 4. This is a 2. And, oh, that moves a 4 into one of those cells. Ah, and there's a 4 look in one of those cells as well. Oh, and look, if we look at column 1, we've got to put a 2 and a 3 in column 1. Well, where can they go? They've got to go in those two cells. So this is a 2, 3. The 6 here actually disambiguates that bottom grey region. Could have done that before. I didn't see it. This 6 forces a 6, 3 here. So that square, if we look at row 9 now, we need to place 8 and 9 in it. There's an 8 here. So we can actually finish this. That's a 9. That's an 8. This becomes a 7, 9 pair. And bobbins. We can't resolve it yet. Uh, two, three. Oh, look, if there's no three in, in, in the grey area here, there must be an eight. Um, so we can actually, can we place the eight? We can't place the eight. But we can pencil it in. And now, which square is a 9? It's got to be that one. That fixes the 9 and the 8 at the top. That fixes that one's a 6, look. That one can't be an 8. And we get a 4, 6, 7 triple there. I'm actually going to delete the pencil marking, therefore, and switch to that notation. Not 4, 6, 7. 4, 7, 8. That's not 8. And... So I've used this shape. I've 
I haven't finished working out what this shape is, except there's an 8 in it. Look, this 8 is very nice. That forces the 8 into that square. We know there's a 4 in it, so actually this is 4, 6, and 7. There's a 7 up here. Look, we get it. That's a 7. That's a 4. That's got to be the 6. The 7 fixes the 7 and the 9. That locks a 9 in here. That locks the 2 and the 1. And everything is starting to flow now. Wow. Um, 2 fixes the 2 and the 3 over this side. Let's sort that out. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, let's see what else we can do here. It must be... Those two squares have got to be a 2-3 pair to complete this box. Once we see this is a 2-3, that's got to be a 1. There's a 2-3 pair now in column 4. So that can't be a... Oh, goodness, sorry. Uh, that can't be a 2 or a 3. Let's remove that. Oh, and in fact, look, that also sees a 4 and a 6. So that, that's got to be a 2 or a 3. So this, there's a 2-3 pair in this box. That's a 4-6 pair. I can't see how to resolve. This square must be a 2 or a 3. And... Oh, 1, 2, 3, triple there. So that's 7, 8, 9 in some order. There's no 9 here. There's no 8 here. And these two squares have got to be 3 and 4 to complete the box. And there is a 3 over there to help us out with that. That's 3. That's 7 now. That fi Oh, see, that fixes the 9 there. So we can actually, we're going to get down to a 4, 8 pair here, a 7, 8 pair here. Um, and we've almost, it feels like we, I think we've got most of what we're going to get out of the grey boxes. So we, let's fill this square in. That's got to be a six. That fixes the six and the four at the top. So there's a four in one of those two squares. The two, three pair in column four. Let's revisit that because if we look down here now, we still need the seven and a nine. This nine is going to tell us what, what the order is. And once we get the seven here, that fixes everything. This square here now has to be a three and everything is going to disambiguate, I think. This becomes a one, three pair. The three here is going to fix it. And that is how to solve this beautiful puzzle. And that is correct. Fantastic. Ard, he always delivers. Um, it is, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something uh, not, not monstrous today. I'll try and find something suitably monstrous for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, do come back later for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.